Hi, you're a blessing having chanced upon Christocentric message because we have loads of content that is going to push you to your next level. You're about listening to another message by the man of God, Apostle Joshua Salma. Sit back as the Lord ministers to you. And if you're new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button. Don't forget to like our message and share abroad as well. Comment in that comment section. I'll see you again. Bye-bye. It's a prophetic service. We are made in the kingdom on the strength of the instructions that we receive. Hallelujah. Instructions are very powerful. Without instructions, there is no basis for obedience. And every delivery in the kingdom is at the instance of obedience. Please listen carefully. Instructions are the basis for obedience. You cannot obey nothing. You have to obey what you have been instructed to do. Are we together? Yes. John chapter 2 and verse 5. Whatsoever he tells you to do, he says, do it. There is no doing until he tells you. So when God wants you to do, and remember, doing is connected to the manifestation of the glory of God. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. The Bible says, this is what the Lord commanded that ye should do. And if your doing is complete, then the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. So it starts with instructions. Then you obtain grace to do. We call that obedience. And when your obedience is complete, then there is no limit to the manifestation of the glory of God. Instructions are very important. In the Bible, people lost their thrones because they violated instructions. An example was the man Saul. Hallelujah. An instruction was given to him by God through prophet Samuel. And the people mounted pressure upon him and he violated prophetic instructions. And then when Samuel came to him, he said, No, Saul, you have done foolishly. You would have allowed me to come and offer these sacrifices and God would have established your throne forever. But now, on account of violating this, he says, Your throne has been taken away from you. And God will look for another man who can obey instructions. People were commended greatly in scripture on account of their obedience. Obedience to instructions. If it be thou, he said, bid me come. And he said, come. He didn't tell Peter, come. He said, come. He did not mention Peter's name. The one who obeyed the instruction was the one who saw the miracle. Not the one who heard. Not the one who was a witness. The one who took a step of faith. Hallelujah. And so I felt very strongly in my spirit um, when Zari over the weekend, such a glorious time with God's people, our family there. Yeah, it deserves our applause. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap. Hallelujah. And I gave them a few instructions there in closing that I just sent strongly in my spirit to repeat. Um, I think it's, it's Mark 13, 37 or so. That, um, that should be Mark 13, 36 or 37. It says, what I say to one. Let's try. Yeah. What I say. Let's go to 36. I think it should be. Maybe I've missed it somewhere. Mark 13, 37. What I say to one. I say to all. Hallelujah. Yes. What I say to you. I say to all. Other versions to say what I say to one. So when God speaks to one person. It is because he's talking to everyone. I want to give you a few prophetic instructions. I owe you a responsibility under God to help your spiritual growth and your holistic development. And this we have done without any sense of laxity and carelessness and oversight. God has granted us grace as wise master builders. Build such that you become a formidable believer. A believer of stature furnished in every way and from every dimension first your spiritual life then extending to every aspect of your life hallelujah he says I will not be negligent to put you in remembrance of these things although ye already know them and are established in this present truth let me start by telling you something I've told you in this house if you listen to the things that I teach you you pay attention 
to the truth that you receive if you turn this ministry to become a school of the spirit for you and you make up your mind as a covenant to submit yourself to the truths that you learn i give you a guarantee by the integrity of scripture no matter what background you come from no matter where you are currently your life must become a sign and a wonder it is true only a foolish student edits what the lecturer is teaching him especially when he does not have results your assignment as a student is to trust the institution that employed the lecturer are we together now yes not placing value on the lecturer is distrusting the institution that brought him to work there is a verification system in any serious institution that insists and ensures that there are quality lecturers that help the students become. When you go to world-class institutions like Yale, Stanford, Harvard, Cambridge, they have a very rigorous systems, system of absorbing people to become lecturers, more so senior lecturers. When you say you're a professor of Harvard or Oxford or Yale, even by mistake, you cannot be suspected to be a joker. You can't bribe your way into that level Perhaps as a student, you can cut corners and do all kinds of things, but the verification systems are too strict. By the time you actually become a lecturer in those institutions, the reason why you have global credibility is because you pass through a system that is insistent on standards. Are we together? So when you hear the truths that you listen to every week, I want you to know that a man cannot just think out sermons like this. They are a manuscript. They are a roadmap. No matter how intelligent you are, you cannot just bring up teachings like this that connect to themselves. No. It is not God thinking this Sunday, what do I teach you? No. There is already what you should become. The professor who is training medical students already knows what they should become. Are we together now? It is only a terrible and wicked teacher that keeps teaching every day. And when they ask him, what do you want these students to become? He says, well, I don't know. Me too. I'm, I'm, let's keep watching. No. No. There are lecture halls that are full of pictures to the students of what they will become. Those who were once there and they listen diligently. And so while you are in that class, you are inspired by the photos. Oh, this great professor, he once sat here. He was once a naive student, but he came with rapt attentiveness and he listened his way to greatness. My prayer for someone is that among the many things that happen to you tonight is that you enter a covenant with yourself that I will listen. This stubbornness has punished me throughout this year. I think I should pay attention. Don't edit the formula from those who have results. No, it is pride. You see, when you become and you are accredited then you can decide to say you were wrong but until you become and until your results bail you your assignment is to listen trusting that those who have been mandated by god or by any institution to help you become that they were trained by god god does not recruit garbages no god does not trust um on serious people to come and help and build someone of a destiny as qualitative as yours. No, God loves you too much to play games with your destiny. Your assignment is to listen. Don't just be a fan. I've told you, my dear people, Koinonia does not have fans. Fans don't have any inheritance. Nobody gives them anything. To fans, it does not matter who wins or who loses in a match. They are spectators and then they return with nothing. You see that? No. God does not come to visit fans. He comes to attend to people who are hungry and are thirsty. I said it in Zaria that the final days of any spiritual feast is the day for hungry and for thirsting people. The Bible says, Jesus said in the last day of the feast, if any man thirst, let him come. That you are here tonight is because God gave you the allowance to come as proof of your hunger, as proof of your thirst. Are you ready to receive now? We are made by the prophetic instructions that we receive. And it is important. I will just give you 
two or three very quickly. There's something else I want to talk about. I want to teach you something before. Um, so I, I will just rush this. I may not be as elaborate as I was when teaching Zaria, giving them these prophetic instructions, because there's something else that I want you to understand. Praise the name of the Lord. All right, instruction number one. Let's write. The first instruction that God is giving us tonight is to commit ourselves continually to the ministry of the word and prayer. Please write it down. The first prophetic instruction to our global family and to all who are connected to the body of believers, even at this period, after today officially we're on break until I will announce the resumption shortly in January, it's important that whilst we are away from ourselves physically, have this at the back of your mind, that the ministry of the word and the ministry of prayer is mandatory for the growth and the excelling of any and all believers. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4, the Bible says, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. So you must give yourself continually. Say continually. Not once a week, no, not twice a week, not three times a week, continually. It must become habitual. In fact, it is safe to say the ministry of the word and prayer should become an addiction in your life. That is a wonderful addiction. It's not the type who will cast away. That is the kind that is needed. Hallelujah. That you are addicted, like someone who be addicted to drugs or addicted to whatever it is, they have become a slave to it. When you become a slave to the ministry of prayer and a slave to the ministry of the word, it's like the clay in the hand of a potter. Now you can be built and molded to become as intended by God. Say continually. Many of us do not pray. Some study, read books, but they do not pray. I made that observation over the weekend. Others pray, they do not study. Others study, but they do not pray. There is nowhere in scripture where the believer is given the liberty to choose between the ministry of prayer or the ministry of the word. It's wrong mentorship. You never are given the liberty to choose between prayer or the word. Are we together now? Yes. God, when he manifested as the word incarnate, he called himself the word of God, the logos of God, John 1.1. 1, 1. But then he said, my house shall be called the house of prayer for all nations. The life of Jesus captured the relevance of a rich life of prayer and a rich life of the word. The, I think the most concise blend of prayer and the word, as I know and as I've studied in scripture, is found in Matthew chapter 4, the whole temptation of Jesus. I'm not teaching that. I've done teachings on that. But you will see that when Jesus was tempted of the devil, there was a healthy synergy between prayer and the ministry of the word that helped him to stand, survive, overcome, thrive through that temptation. And all through his earth work, we see the word, we see prayer. So give yourself continually to the word and prayer. Let me tell you the truth. It takes grace and discipline to be prayerful. It takes grace and discipline. Grace comes from God. Discipline comes from your will. Write it down, please. It takes grace and discipline to be prayerful and to be a wordful individual. It doesn't just take grace alone. The enabling grace comes from God. But the discipline, discipline here expressed as the staying power. It is not always convenient to pray. No. No. It is not always convenient to fast. It is not always convenient to study. It takes time to pray. It takes time to study. It takes time to do all of these exercises. But you are motivated by number one, your love for God. And number two, what happens to you when you engage this? Look up please, ladies and gentlemen. How many of you know that it takes time to cook a serious meal that you serve kings? You cannot cook a meal for kings in 10 minutes, no matter what you are rushing. You take the time, you want to do a proper three-course meal. They stay in the kitchen almost forever. But when they come out of that kitchen, you smile all through that meal. Are we together? They meticulously follow, make sure that everything is in place. There are certain restaurants where before you finish talking, the food is ready. 
and you struggle this one is not done this one is not done because they were in a hurry it takes time if you are not willing to give time you cannot grow it takes time to bath i hope it takes time for you <laughs> i'm joking i'm joking are we together I, I joked one time on this in Zaria that there are people who go to bath and you are literally gisting with someone in the room from the bathroom. And the only thing you hear is just, Wah! water has been poured and the person rushes out and you're like, what did you do? That's it? Come on, respect your body. <laughs> Hallelujah. Takes time. Give yourself continually to prayer and the word. Number two. Invest time, energy, and resources in your health. Hmm. Invest time, invest energy, invest resources in being and staying healthy. And don't think this is just a casual statement. People have died because of the neglect of this instruction. Invest time, comma, invest energy, comma, invest resources in your health everything that will leave you healthy is your assignment and in this end time is your business that includes eating that includes exercising as god grants you grace that includes staying away from information that pollutes your mind do you know that your mental state is connected to your health we have ignored this for many years in the body of christ but now we are learning again and thank god for christian experts who are giving the body a reorientation that your body can be healthy but if your mind is polluted your body will still pay the price the bible says a merry heart do it good like medicine but it says um, a broken spirit i think I, I hope i quote that correctly is rottenness to the bones or something of that sort most people are healthy most people are healthy in terms of eating well and whatever it is but they have surrounded themselves with negative information by nine o'clock every morning they have information enough to depress them for the day they watch nonsense listen to nonsense and there are people who are advocates of bad news they wait patiently for you to wake up as soon as you wake up they say i have Jesus," and you will think they will tell you jesus saves you will think they will tell you you have a greater tomorrow just to let you know that that thing you were expecting will never even happen again because the person who was in that office was removed overnight and like joe back to back you keep hearing sad news and at the end of it by 12 noon you are already as depressed as someone who is almost dying your joy was extracted as a result of all kinds of people make up your mind protect your mind protect your body is that a wise instruction say I shall not die one more time say I shall not die there is a responsibility component to longevity I made up my mind that I will not die. Oh, this thing I said, I said it in the presence of God. I said it in the presence of demons. I shall not die. But there can be death in the pot. I hope you know. You can eat yourself to death by careless eating. I challenged a family over in Zaria and let me borrow from something that I told them. Although God is bringing the body to a that level of maturity now until now it used to be very embarrassing for christians to talk about things like medicine and drugs and hospital because the advocacy before now is that once you talk about drugs and hospital you are not serious with god you are not learning the things of god it's not true it's not true there are higher dimensions in the spirit where you become so fortified by the word of god that you rise literally above the realms of sicknesses it is true this is, these are dimensions of eternal life. In, eternal life is in phases and stages. He said, I have come that ye may have life and have it more abundantly. And let me tell you the truth. There are people on earth today who are walking in that reality. They have risen to a point where no divination and no enchantment. They have prepared their bodies. It is only when the assignment is done, they will live with honor, but not as a result of weakness. They have found something in the spirit that has given them security even in their bodies. But that is a gradual process. 
And that's why I believe God brought to us doctors, advancement in medicine to midwife our health while we keep learning God's ways until we become. Do not be ashamed. I'm speaking to our global family. Please, if you are sick and you pray and it looks like nothing is happening, don't be discouraged. Just have this at the back of your mind. I am a student in the school of the spirit. One day I will become. Take responsibility and go to a hospital. Let them diagnose you. Even if you want a supernatural miracle, know what is wrong first. Hallelujah. There are many people today who would not have died if they were responsible. We do a lot of funny things in church. We quietly go and buy drugs from a pharmacy. We swallow it and come and say, I've been, I've stayed how many years? What is there? Will you go to hell? What is the lying for? No. Eternal, <laughs> eternal life is at work in you. Whoever believe, does not believe in that, that's his cup of tea. Everyone has a share of eternal life. Grow your own until the point where you have stature. I mean, we have a robust medical team at the back. Experts and what not ashamed. I mean a responsible medical team. Yes. So I'm saying it now so that you take away that sense of shame. Oh me, I, I've, I've never ever seen a doctor. What is wrong with seeing a doctor? When you over depend on the things of the flesh to a point where you do not believe the word of God again. Now there is a problem. Because the Bible says to be carnally minded is death. Right? But to be spiritually minded it says is life and peace hallelujah there are times where the the report of doctors conflict the report of the word at that point you are given the liberty to choose whose report you believe but there are many times the report of doctors agree with the word are we together now yes they look at you and they say, listen, oh, you have this. Do you know for simple vitamin deficiencies, there are many, many believers who have put themselves down. I gave Zaria an illustration. Permit me to use it here. Now, if you refuse to be attended to medically speaking and you break down and die before your time, and if one million souls were connected to your destiny to be lifted by your becoming, you have robbed those people because of pride versus you go to the hospital responsibly you are treated well then now you are healthy and you keep learning the ways of divine health which of them is wiser me i will not lie to you go to the hospital if you are sick i will pray for you when you are sick but we are responsible people i will visit you when you are sick if i have the time and god grants the grace i will not be ashamed of it we are becoming it takes a while did you hear what i said we are becoming it takes a while and so while you are growing be patient with your growth god is patient with you that's why he keeps empowering the mind of medical practitioners to see that there are advancements in medicine don't die the death of a fool many have done that in a bit to feel spiritual what is this pain i'm having from january till november it has refused to go and you have refused to do anything about it There are many preachers who preach on the pulpit and go back home and they cannot sleep. They are rolling. That's the reason why you find out people begin to abuse drugs, injecting themselves and doing all kinds of things because they have to survive. They want to give a picture of invincibility, whereas they are dying. Please take responsibility. Maybe this is a deliverance message for someone now. One of the things you should use this break to do is go and have a full medical checkup. Write it down. write it you are my people write it full medical checkup whatever that means just write it when you tell the doctor he will explain it to you full medical checkup why are you afraid of checking yourself if you believe in god find an explanation to that pain find an explanation to that inexplainable dizziness you stand in the sun, you are almost falling. You fell four times, you don't care. Don't wait till you fall not to rise again. Go to the hospital. This is called responsible Christianity. Responsible Christianity. Take your parents for medical checkup. Take them. Many of them will not, ref they will refuse, but take them. Find a way to babysit them until they get to the doctor. Let them verify what is wrong with you. Take your children. A child is crying every night 
and as a parent, I, I, now I'm a firm believer in the word of God, but you, a child cannot be crying for weeks and all you do is make a sign of a cross with anointing oil on his head and say, go and sleep. No, I believe in the power of the anointing, but let's be responsible. You don't like what I'm saying? Take it as a prophetic instruction. Full medical checkup, write it down. From your head to your toe. Meet a serious doctor, please check. Is my heart all right? Am I breathing well? The doctor says, why are you doing that? Tell them we're instructed in koinonia. As a prophet, he said, wow, that's serious. This man of God must be serious. Absolutely, he's right. Right. <laughs> Hallelujah. My dear ministers of the gospel, see a doctor. Go and see a doctor. Go and see a doctor. If you are working in divine health, medicine will not conflict it. It will be clear medically. Are we together? Yes. It will be clear medically. Instruction number three. This is koinonia for you. Are you ready for number three? Take the time to build quality relationships and connect with existing relationships. Write it down. Take the time, this period, build quality relationships and connect with existing relationships. There are some of you, you have not seen certain people for a long time. Some of you have not seen your parents for five years. As soon as we share the grace tonight, go home. <laughs> Laugh, but go home. I will tell you why. Listen, every time I talk like this, you should know that I'm not speaking nonsense. Do you know that, God forbid, not to be a prophet of doom, if your parents have five more years to live and you see them only once in two years, you are going to see them two more times before they leave. Are we together now? Yeah. Build quality relationships. Use this brick to edit your relationships. Who destroyed my life this year? Father, I receive grace. You strike them out of their life. Who misled me? Listen, listen, listen. Who stopped me from coming to church? That, that I insisted and I came and I was blessed. You mark them. Not to condemn them, but you are improving your life. Listen, if you want to grow, put aside sentiments. Love your destiny enough to go through a serious system of editing. And that also means editing good people. People do not have to be bad to destroy you. Hmm. Prophetic instruction. It's not an advice. It's an instruction. Go back and sit down. Who helped me to know God more today? Now. Who encouraged me when I was weak? I lost my job in March, but there was a sister who was always calling me in the night, insisting that we pray. I told her about my rent and she divided her salary into half to give me. How do you leave such a person? No, learn what works and stay there. Many of us do not know the difference between good and evil. Something is wrong because strong meat helps you to discern. All people cannot occupy the same position in your heart. There are people who help you know God. Every time you come around them, you are discussing pro-destiny discussions. And that even includes elderly people. There are elderly people when you come around, when you see them, they will motivate your mother, your father, help you. At the end of that discussion, your faith is stirred up. But there are people as soon as you get there, when you leave, you deflate all. It's like everything you have been building just goes down. Love is a command. Relating with everybody is not a command. You are given the liberty to love all men. But select with the wisdom of a coach. The team that you need to build to your life that takes you forward. Is someone listening now? Yes. That also includes as much as if your children have not gotten to the age of discretion. Please, parents, take responsibility and help choose the kind of friends they have. There are bad people today who are agents of darkness who come to destroy little children. A small child who you call a small child will ask you a question as a parent that you cannot sleep. Where did you learn that from? And they call the name of somebody. 
everything under your house your roof should serve your god and anybody who comes with any strange god love them but tell them listen if i brought you from the village and i'm changing you here and you are practicing idolatry you are going back to the village let them say i i treated you bad no problem you don't like what i'm saying ba? invest in listen get to a point in your life where you start investing in quality people there is a difference between a christian and a non-christian there is a difference between a visionary person and a non-visionary person there is a difference between a kind person and a wicked person know the difference and begin to prayerfully piece together good people in your life hallelujah yes do that as a man of god ministers of the gospel have quality ministerial relationships people who love you you stand and they hold your hands to stand in integrity together not a friend that begins to teach you crooked ways of doing ministry and you start well as soon as you get into certain associations you start practicing devilish things that are antichrist there is a way we do this thing oh there is something they can take you somewhere there's a way we can wash your eyes to see there is a way we do some things no no please you are hearing me you belong to any association that is not of god obtain grace don't fight anybody but live in peace as a sign of your respecting your tomorrow are we together and when you leave this place for those of you who are traveling beware of those who were in your yesterday because your yesterday is very different from your today they will look at you with the lens of yesterday bros you are back we go to that our place and you say no i'm a child of god then they laugh hysterically and say are you the first don't condemn them but let that be your last time in that environment you will not die if you don't see them you can send them a text i'm in town may god bless you that's it no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me no shadow you won't light up no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me no wall you Separate your relationships into outer court. Hello? Inner court. Holy of holies. There are people who you should love generally, but they should never cross the outer court. There's nothing you can do about them, but keep them at the outer court of your destiny. There are people because of their love for God, their value and contribution to your life, they have access to the inner court. And I hope in your most holy place there is only one person there. Because if there is more than one person there, you are practicing idolatry. That most holy place is a position that only God, it is only the size of God that can fill that place. If money is there with God, remove money out this night. If titles are there, remove it this night. The most holy place was designed to be the habitation of the jealous God. The only one whose size fills that place. So every other thing that has transited itself from your outer court, your inner court, your most holy place, and God is somewhere trying to squeeze space with money, titles, a name, fame, remove all of them out this night and rearrange your relational life. Know who matters to you most. Love everybody, but not everybody is worth dying for. No. No. Are we together? Yes. This is very important. Invest in your relationships. Connect with existing relationships that have produced profit to your life. Let me tell you this. I have taught you and I will keep teaching you. We maintain relationships by fueling it consistently with gratitude. 
if you cannot contribute value contribute gratitude if you cannot contribute value contribute gratitude somebody is always paying your school fees you don't have any money to give the person back but always say thank you remember gratitude gratitude honor now is the time when you show people gratitude gratitude talking about relationships use this opportunity to tell people thank you let me advise you ladies and gentlemen do not be under pressure to stretch your finances beyond necessary as a way of trying to say i must buy hamper for everybody there are too many good people in your life and you are growing financially i'm not teaching you greedy people who agree with me quickly now because they don't want to give i'm not teaching you to be greedy are we together but i'm saying there is a narrative in church that we must correct you must not give me hamper to show you love me if you are not yet there pray for me it is a greater gift than a hamper so don't be under pressure but tell someone thank you you cannot buy a hamper of hundreds of thousands but you can load your phone with two thousand naira and send thank you to everybody thank you for what you have done I want to appreciate you for making me love God, know God more. Send. That is your Christmas gift. And God will honor your heart of sincerity and gratitude. Don't wait and be angry and say, can you imagine it's Christmas? Nobody is even thinking about me. That is a message from your tomorrow that you are going to tomorrow alone because you are not investing in anybody's life. Are we together? Yes. Somebody should matter enough in your life to be able to tell them thank you send something home to your loved ones send something to your children parents spouses send something to one another children send something to your parents preachers even you know we men of god sometimes we are always receiving pastors do something to your people too no matter how small and then members to do something to your leader don't just say amen thank god we are finished now go let god who called you help you it's, i'm not saying you should do anything for me no but I'm teaching you is a very good never watch a man bless you from January till December and wrap up that year without blessing the person it's a good culture I'm not teaching you to give me anything believe me God has been faithful to me but it's a culture you must learn that includes your boss in office some of you are soon going on break go and get a hamper I don't like the director but you like your tomorrow And you bring the hamper and drop it and the man is surprised why did you do this he first suspects you because he's not used to people being kind for no reason and then after one week he calls you then he starts telling you the story of his life because you have earned a right to move deeper in relationship with him by january you receive an email that you have become a director and people will say no this lady must have done something they are right you walked your way by intelligence to rise and scale to the position of a director do you understand what I'm saying do not allow anybody who has played a significant role in your life without maintaining the relationship and some of you have money you are rich use your money to build relationships relational investment is greater than any other investment it is because of relationships people go to heaven It's because of relationships people go to hell don't ignore relationships are we learning connect with good relationships quality relationships apostle I'm not that kind I don't visit people choose people to visit now there's no excuse visit someone surprise them go to their home just go and sit down I just came to say hello Wow what do we do no 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 don't bother yourself trying to do anything joke with them play with them how are you doing pray with them carry a gift and drop and tell them you leave and you watch that widow crying and you watch that person crying and say no one has ever done this in my life and god said you did that for that woman get ready for the next level these are the things we do in the spirit to rise is god helping someone the days of eating alone that's what destroys people. There is he that scattereth 
and yet increases. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to penury. Let me challenge you. Let your one naira, your one pound, your one dollar add a smile to someone's face. Invest in relationships. Number four. This is the most important discussion about the most important discussion. Go for an end of year retreat. I'm repeating myself, you have heard me before, but I will always drum it because these are ordinances that are fixed. Most believers are not taught that a retreat is part of the believer's process. Retreats are times where you set apart, you set apart time to be with the Lord, to be all by yourself, flogging it out with destiny. Listen carefully. A retreat is a time that is set apart, away from the noise. If God grants you grace and you are buoyant enough, you can travel somewhere, be alone with God. At any level, you can even use your house, just away from the noise and distraction. Take a day, take it two days, take three days and spend with the Lord. What do you do in a retreat? Number one, thanksgiving. The first thing we do in a retreat is to personally, lavishly express gratitude to the God who has kept you. Please learn this. Believers must be taught. What do you do in a retreat? Number two, an honest appraisal of the current year, the year ending now. You do an appraisal of the year. This is the second thing we do in a retreat. After you are done thanking God, rolling before your maker thanking him for all he's done the next thing is you must appraise the year and i've taught you the indices that you use to appraise your year your spiritual growth your level of mental transformation your level of health and wholeness are we together your relationships your finances purpose and you know destiny advancement you gauge your life against these indices have i done well this year what would I have done better this year that I did not do? What opportunities did I miss? What opportunities did I maximize? What instructions did I ignore? What was the price, the consequence? Are we together? Let me tell you this. When you are doing an appraisal of yourself, do not lie to yourself. Be sincere and honest, as transparent before God as you can be. Okay, this year, I lost a lot of opportunities because of carelessness. This year, from a spiritual standpoint, I was not serious in my prayer life. Not to feel condemned. It is between you and God. It's nobody's business. This year, had my highest rating in terms of spiritual growth. But as a father, I must confess that this year, I, was, I did not perform my fatherly role to my family as should be. I allowed my wife to be the person feeding us all through this year and I did not even tell her thank you. You're having a retreat now. Lord, forgive me. Don't feel condemned. Lord, forgive me. This year, I allowed my children. I don't even know where they got their school fees from. It's only God that saved them. They would have prostituted themselves. I take responsibility. A retreat is not the time to dance and ask God for more anointing. You appraise yourself first. After thanksgiving, appraisal as a man of god did i teach koinonia the best that i could did i help the people did i manipulate the people did i teach them truth was i sound in scripture is there something about my teaching method i need to change as a ceo go for a retreat it doesn't matter that it's a secular corporation okay have i paid my people well we made so much gain this year did i share the honor did I increase their salary? Some of the pillars in my company, did I bless them or I just ignored everybody? I ate all the profit alone as a CEO and the Holy Spirit tells you this is wrong. You need to change. Motivate your people. Encourage them. The security man who stopped armed robbers from killing you, he's still receiving 5,000 till now. You would have been dead, long dead. The man has a secret to all your office doors and all of that and he's not touched one naira. You are still giving him 5,000. He told you his wife has given birth. You are still giving him 5,000. Retreat. That's where you flog it out. As a man of God, I need to improve on my teaching. There's a lot of spiritual laziness. No. I need to step up. 
Maybe I need to go and meet another man of God. Have some time of discussion. Let iron sharpen iron. You see that now? As a ministry, I think we need to move to the next level. Structural establishment. As a businessman, in the place, you are appraising yourself. We had potential to have five branches of my business, but laziness and carelessness and fear kept me in one place. This is what you do during a retreat. Any great man, whether in the secular or in the faith walk, who does not practice retreats can never be exceptional. End of year retreats. Now, generally speaking, you shouldn't wait to, till the end of year before you do retreats. You can fragment your life across various phases. There are people who have retreats once every month. They have retreats at strategic periods of their lives, their birthdays, their anniversaries. But every believer has a kingdom culture. One of the reasons why we give break, you can imagine, I told you already that a dear man of God confronted me one time and said, Apostle, you're an interesting person. How do you give a ministry this size break? What if you resume and nobody comes? You know, we give breaks for these kinds of reasons. To give you room because your relationship with God is greater than ministry. If you remain faithful koinonia people and you are going down spiritually, we are only playing games here. You know that, right? So this is you and God now. Spending time with God, spending time with family, spending time building your destiny. I want you built too, not just the ministry built. It is people who are built that can build the vision. You believe that? If a CEO goes to have two days with his directors or alone with God, imagine what happens when he returns. By January, February, that person would have surpassed ordinary standards. Now, let me tell you the truth. This is the reason why most Africans do not thrive because we do not believe in this. Without trying to, you know, create any bias of regional biases, one of the things that you learn from the West is that they, they maximize moments like this. They take the time, they can travel somewhere to one village that nobody knows and you will see someone who is a multi-millionaire in a village somewhere, just book an Airbnb and sit down there asking serious questions. These are the kind of people that Jesus said they are not far from, you know, the kingdom. Because they are practicing, all that is left is for them to be born again. But as far as pro-kingdom principles are concerned, they are working in it. Let me challenge you for some of you. You have never had a retreat. Don't be too busy for a retreat. It's an attack. There are things God has wanted to tell you. He's been wanting to tell you for a long time. But maybe your being a worker, your being diligent as a worker will even distract you. The vicissitudes of life. Now in that silence, he can come to you and say, since March, I've been wanting to point something to you. But you are too busy to hear. Now thank God you have given me time. And one direction from him. That leads me to the third. What do you do in a retreat? Number three. Planning and resolutions for the next season. I hope, you, I hope I've not lost you. We're talking about retreats now. Go for an end of year, a personal retreat. What do you do in a retreat? Thanksgiving. What do you do in a retreat? An honest appraisal of the year. You appraise yourself. What do you do in a retreat? Planning and resolutions for the next season. Now you begin to plan. How much do I earn? How can I plan better? How, how do I need to, you know, work my spiritual life? I started this year as, you know, an ordinary staff. Now I've occupied a managerial position. I have to design a new spiritual formula for my remaining spiritually vibrant. This is where planning comes. You plan. What do you do in a retreat? You obtain the doing grace. There is a grace called the doing or the enabling grace. It says, now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. It's not enough to just plan. Most of you have your books full of things you plan to do this year. Some of you did not do even one. Don't end a retreat just by proper beautiful planning. No. Many are the devices in a man's heart. The Bible says, however, the counsel of the Lord alone, that shall stand. And when God gives you counsel, he also gives you the doing grace. The doing grace. 
when we started this year there are many things that god gave us an instruction that we do we did not know as, as yet how they would be done but glory be to god listening to him and obtaining that doing grace granted us the opportunity to do very great things for god this year let me recap again that a retreat is a time that is set about apart to be with the lord it's a time of renewal it's a time of refreshing it's a time to get direction for your life it's also a time of empowerment you are empowered by the spirit fresh anointing fresh grace you're a man of god for instance and you go for a retreat you'll be surprised what happens there you spend the two three days one week with the lord you come out like the eagle ready for next year ready with great fire ready with great grace hallelujah is it it is at times like this that we receive prophetic words that direct the body of christ towards the next season you don't just sit down and guess what the prophetic word is um which one have we used before okay we have used a, a shining year if we now say the year that um what looks like what people would like you are playing games you will not see any performance because god is not a joker it's in the secret place as you are stretching praying his voice comes this is what i want to do to the people and you receive it for yourself then you announce it in koinonia 31st december 6 p.m west african time on the dot all through our social media platforms the prophetic word for the next year is released and that's what guides us we walk based on times and seasons and there are people who don't believe in prophetic words for the year there's nothing wrong you know it's just their revelation how god has given them but as a ministry and as a global family God has so chosen by his wisdom to guide us, giving us prophetic words for the year that become a compass because we walk in this world based on the law of times and seasons. And God is not doing everything all the time. Are we together? So go for a retreat. Say, I receive grace. One more time. Say, I receive grace to go for a retreat. Let me plead with friends and families and spouses. Commit yourself to helping one another have that retreat. Don't just say a spouse wants to go for a retreat. You start shouting, the Bible says what God has joined. Mm -mm. Explain, discuss as it. And you as a spouse, don't just leave and nobody knows you have gone. They think you are missing. And then after one week, you say, ah, should I not be about my father's business? That was Jesus, not Mary and not Joseph. Hallelujah. When you are going for a retreat, we live an e in evil times. Let your loved ones know where you are going so that they know you are safe. They know the difference between a kidnap and a retreat. Don't put people under stress because you are alone with God. Because there are people who will hear messages like this and say, my own starts from this night. They won't go back home now. And their loved ones will be looking for them for a long time. Church people are very interesting people. It's good to obey instructions, but wisdom is profitable to direct. Shout a loud amen. So when you have people around your life, don't ignore them. Let them know, okay, I'll be going for a retreat from this day to that day. This is where I'll be by God's grace. If you call me and I don't pick, don't, don't worry. I'm safe. I'm fine. I'll be spending this time with the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we together? Go for a retreat, oh, in the name of Jesus. Please go for a retreat. I'm challenging you. This, this is, a, is a secret that has helped some of us. I don't know how my life would have been today without retreats. Give God time and you will hear him in a way that will surprise you. Give God time and he will give you direction. One direction that comes from that secret place will redefine the next 10 years of your life. Carry all your pain, carry all your confusion, carry all your burdens, carry everything to him. Cry before him and let him give you direction. Let him give you help. Are you ready for number five? The fifth prophetic instruction. Share the love of Jesus with everyone around you. Share the love of Jesus. I said this one time and I'm repeating myself again. Share the love of Jesus. There are two ways according to scripture that we share the love of Jesus. One, 
by the preaching of the gospel number two by giving please write it down the two ways that we preach the gospel or that we share the love of Jesus in preaching and in giving I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation it says therein is the glove of God revealed in preaching when you preach and when you give you give people an opportunity to know Jesus please look up every believer in Christ is first a child of God but number two is an ambassador of the kingdom are we together and as kingdom ambassadors we have a responsibility to sit with that the kingdom that we so lovingly represent is known to all men especially the king of that kingdom don't allow the year to waste without someone knowing Jesus in and through your life don't allow the year waste without someone finding Jesus share the love of Jesus with everyone around you in giving for God so loved the world that he gave say giving some of you like preaching the preaching part you were smiling you had giving your mom the apostle don't say it. I will say it <laughs> preaching and giving what do you give everything that can make people's lives better advice you know this world's goods like the Bible says let me challenge you organize a small welfare for someone in your little community there are people within your community some of them some of these people they don't even know where they will get a meal from if you can buy one bag of rice 60,000 or how I think I'm right whatever amount it is you put it in small bags you meet them and tell them well I'm here to share the love of Jesus tell them about Jesus or you can buy something for the children you can set two days to do a Bible study program for children just to help them know the Lord you don't need to have the name of any ministry are we together now yes or you can decide to just take a hundred thousand send ten ten thousand to ten strategic families that you know love the Lord and may not have capacity to and just tell them with love from Jesus what a beautiful way to share the love of Jesus hallelujah make sure that you share the love of Jesus with someone share it with children share it with your family members share it with friends share it with all kinds of people let them know that you are a Christian let them know you are a child of God don't watch people go to hell and say I don't care I will mind my own business if they reject your proposal about Jesus that's fine at least give them a chance that should be true for children some of you may send some welfare material perhaps to a school somewhere and just tell them this is with love this is just to show you that I love you everything we do for Jesus I want you to know that it will be rewarded in this life and in the life to come do you believe that yes some of you may want to decide to bless maybe the security people in your office you just make up your mind that I will give all these people I will buy one bag of rice and divide it and just call all of them don't just give people say take take no it's not about giving it's about helping them to feel the love say something before you give are we together yes let it not just be about money or bags of rice or groceries or whatever it is no tell them something about Jesus and that includes non-christians I hope you know you you know that that includes non-christians go and gather some children doesn't matter what faith what religion share the love of Jesus with them help them perhaps your company can decide as a seed to take a day and give a 50 percent discount on whatever it is that you do and boldly tell them I'm doing this as a love seed from Jesus amazing do it sometimes it's not always about giving money you can also ease the burden for someone are we together now I love you forever I love you forever I love you forever Lord 
Someone must know Jesus because you were born. Someone must know Jesus. Utilize this time. Don't let the year end without bringing one soul to Jesus. It's a lie if you tell me there's nobody to be saved. I don't believe you. Everybody that is unsaved according to scripture is called a harvest. It's already a harvest. And I've taught you here in God's mind, the problem that God has is not the harvest, it's the laborers. The harvest is wide, but the laborers are few. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers. Some of you show kindness, but preach directly to someone for God's sake. Sit with someone and start talking to him about his life. I just want to share a few thoughts with you about life and destiny. Do you mind? And the person says, all right, that's fine. And you talk to the person. Let me tell you, today you see me as a great man, but let me tell you a little story. It was not always like this. Don't just walk to people and say, who are you? You are going to hell. No, don't. don't. I mean, come on. You, you are given creativity. Don't harass people. They will take you to court. Yes, sir. We live in a time where people are very right conscious. Don't go and put yourself in trouble. No, there are, are very loving ways of introducing conversations that, you know, culminate in salvation. Tell them about your life. You feel inspired by my life? Let me tell you a little story. It wasn't always like this. I came from perhaps a dysfunctional family. You can use your pain. Every man's pain is his point of contact. Are we together? You go and you see a bereaved family, for instance, that's an opportunity to preach Jesus. Let them know that the Bible says there is hope beyond the grave. You start from there. At the end of it, you, you do a proper altar call. Don't be embarrassed whether anybody would say yes to Jesus. Or, I mean, so what? If nobody lifts their hands, that's fine. You planted that seed already. And sometimes there might be someone there needing salvation, but he will refuse. But that seed, have you ever preached to someone who got born again one year later without any other person preaching? It was that seed. It's called the incorruptible seed of the word. You just plant it and leave it there and watch what the Holy Spirit does. That person will not sleep day and night. What is this vision I'm seeing? Seeing myself in a crusade ground. I've always hated this church thing. I've always, don't worry, just leave them and God. You do your own preaching and walk away. If it is this God that we serve, one day you will see that person will call you and say, where are you? Um, I usually don't do this, so you say, no problem, I'm listening. Uh, I still want you to tell me a little more about this, your Jesus thing. This Jesus church thing. No problem. You gladly say it. And you want to preach the gospel, you take away your ego. It will sting your ego. People will demean you on account of the gospel. Accept it with joy. This is the price it takes to love Jesus and to see the nations know him. Some of you may need to preach to your children. They are not saved. Gather them together and say, my dear children, let me talk to you about Jesus. The Jesus that made your father who he is today. Story, story. Then they say story. And you tell them, once upon a time I was an idol worshiper. Once upon a time there were incisions in our bodies on account of the gods that our fathers served. But then some missionaries came from America. Make it interesting. At the end of that conversation, you watch them cry. Because the Spirit of God, there used to be this placard we had in our home back in Joss. It says, Christ is the head of this home. The unseen guest at every meal, the silent listener to every conversation. Very beautiful. One more time. Christ is the head of this home, it says. Then it says he's the unseen guest at every meal. Then he said he's the silent listener to every conversation, including that conversation you are having with your children. The spirit of the living God is there, representing the presence of Jesus, bringing about conviction. And while you are speaking, your stubborn child for the first time, under the influence of the convicting power of the spirit. If you don't talk to them about Jesus because you are looking at their face, they will never be saved. 
This is an inner work. Their face can look very hardened, but just trust the Spirit of God. I've been in this business of soul winning for a while and I can tell you, there are times you preach on a crusade ground and the people are looking at you as if just finish and go and sleep. But you trust the Lord. The moment you make that altar call, you will see sometimes some unlikely people, high profile people coming to Jesus. So while they were listening to you with their faces supposedly hardened, the Holy Spirit, beyond that veil of their face, doing a work within their spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So let me recap and then we'll go to one more discussion and then we'll pray. My prophetic instructions to you again. Number one, give yourself continually to the word and prayer all through this time. Number two, invest in maintaining your health. Invest in being healthy. Go for a medical checkup. Learn all you can about the principles that make for healthy living. Especially for those who double as believers and medical practitioners. I think they stand on a platform that gives a very, a very intelligent view on how to live healthy. And then number three, make sure you invest in your current relationships and invest in building other superior relationships. Sustain the courage to edit unprofitable relationships. You don't have to hurt them, but anybody who is not pro-destiny, pro-kingdom, pro-spirituality, pro-righteousness, you may need to lovingly draw the line and then rearrange your relationships. Everybody cannot occupy the same space in your heart. Number four, go for an end of year retreat. A time alone with God, giving thanks, a time alone with God, appraising the year honestly and truthfully, a time where you plan and make quality resolutions. And then of course you obtain the doing grace, empowerment in all its ramifications. Now 